additions and changes to the agenda. Uh, you have two items for a uh, summer work schedule, and one for capital improvements need to be added under Section C. And uh, item 6 in Section B needs to be removed. Uh, that's the student handbook changes. We'll do that next time. Okay. We entertain a motion then to approve it. Mr. President, honor the board approved the agenda as amended. Second. Been moved and seconded to approve. Uh, the agenda as amended. And just further discussion. All in favor, right hand. Both same sign. 5 0. All right. Consent agenda items. We have the minutes from the April. Bills for payment. Budget report. Activity fund reports. And the calendar. A minor change. The uh, calendar change, just the, the change as noted uh, from the in-service day on March 7th, change that to 10th. It's just a matter of moving it from a Friday to a Monday. Uh, we have a junior high music festival. Uh, kids going to lacrosse on that 7th, so it works better if we make that switch. So. Is that uh, two days of uh, school meals for kids in Friday Monday? Yeah, for those junior high kids, it would be. Yeah. <clears throat> Mr. President, I move the board approve the consent agenda items as presented. Second the motion. We move and seconded to approve the consent agenda items as presented. Any discussion? All in favor, right hand. Opposed, same sign. 5 0. Ready for patron comments? <coughs> We'll move on to our first item of business, Center for Innovative School Leadership Review. We'll turn the floor over to Bill Saylor, so present the executive summary here. Josh, where did you like it? Uh, I've got to be in front of the camera, of course. Right, right there is, is just fine. <laughs> Is this going to be on TV or anything? Or well, on the internet. Something really important. <laughs> Our local. The first time I've ever been on. So I want Our to local to channel. <laughs> yeah. It's a good sign. CBS. <laughs> well, it's the first for everything, isn't there? It's great to be here tonight. Um, first of all, we had a, a great review. I don't know if uh, you guys have a good time, but we had a good time being here, Josh, board members, and the principals. We appreciate all of you done. <laughs> you did too. Um, I'm going to try to help some of the audience, and some of the audience may not know what we even did. I hope you were involved with the process, but if you're not, <coughs> ask me questions. Uh, what you have in front of you tonight is the executive summary uh, that, that we have some commendations and recommendations. Just to, just to let you know, we have two different reports. It's not The second report is not a secret report, but the second report is what we call the full report, which I'll send to Josh, and he'll get it out to everybody within the next month. What we try to do is condense it down into executive summary so you just have a few pages and a few of our recommendations so you kind of see the highlights of what we're talking about. In about a month, we'll have every comment all the team members made as well as all the comments from, uh, from the surveys, uh, some other data tables, those kinds of things that you may want to look at in the future. That will be coming to you later. Um, we try to put what we consider to be the most significant or the, the strongest highlights as positive as well as recommendations in this report. So and there may be some uh, comments in that report that you may think are more important, but as far as we're concerned, these were the most important. Uh, real quickly, if, and do you have any extras the audience could, uh, in, in case you want to see them, I know this is really important stuff and you want to take it over to read it, memorize it. <laughs> Uh, turn to page uh, three, if you would, to start with. Just to, and I'm not going to say anything about it, but just to let you know that we, on all the reports that we do, we have a little profile about the St. John District and Stafford County and all those kind of things. So that's all this information comes from four different sources, the uh, KSB, KSDE, your district, as well as the U.S. Census Bureau. So if it's wrong... We hope that it was from them, not our problem. But if there's errors on our part, please let us know. Uh, page 4 starts the report. And if you can see on page 4, it says comparison of peer and region schools. I wanted to uh, let you know a little bit about why we do the peer and region schools. 
as you know, St. John, there's only one St. John, and no two districts are exactly alike. However, for our purposes, we try to find what we call peer districts so that we can look at your data versus their data. Um, it's hard to determine if what your salary is if I can't compare it to somebody else or, or budgets or whatever it is. We look at three different things when we, when we look for peer districts. We look for schools that are similar in size, similar in socioeconomic status, and performing as well or better on the state assessments over a long period of time. Not too many schools are like that with St. John. A lot of schools, similar size, similar socioeconomic, but your test ages are really good. But we did find four that we thought basically, and you'll get all that specific data, Josh, later on. You've already seen it already. Uh, but the four that we selected was Mineola, Clifton Clyde, St. Francis, and Burlingame. Now those schools happen to be in your particular area. That's no particular reason other than that was just the four we selected. Also, the region schools, there were 23 region schools, and the region schools are every school district in contiguous counties around Stafford County as well as the schools in Stafford County. We put those all together, too, so you have some kind of idea about how you stack up with all the different schools in your area. Small, you know, Hutchison down to Macville or whatever. Those, are, those will all be coming to you later, and again, Josh, I think the principals probably have already seen those. So that's, what, that's why we do peer and region schools. We also take state averages, so you're going to get three different things. Um, to, to let everybody know, how are you doing? Good, how are you? Good. Let everybody know there were, there were four different areas that we looked at, and we're going to highlight those and then talk about them. But the first one is facility management. The second one is um, human resources. The third would be leadership, and the fourth would be teaching and learning. On page four, we start with some commendations. And again, just to, again, we take two or three and put them in here. There may be 20 or 30 in the full report. Uh, I don't think there's quite that many com recommendations. However, I mean, excuse me, commendations. However, we saw lots of great things. But this report, this review, in our opinion, is to try to give you as many suggestions as we possibly can give you. And you, of course, will decide what you choose to do with this. Just to let you know, to make sure you remember this, that this report is for you. I send this report to no one else. It is a public document. If anyone else asks for that report, I would probably go to Josh first and say, Josh wants you to know that whoever. Uh, actually, just to let you know, a, person, a, a specific example just happened a couple of weeks ago. The uh, Legislative Post Audit Group contacted me and was asking questions and said, can I see one of your reports? Well, sure. So that's an example of who might receive a report. I have three or four districts that I've been involved, we've been involved with. Uh, the newspaper wanted a copy of it or that type of thing. So just, just to let you know, this is the only place it goes unless somebody tells me otherwise. Uh, some of the commendations, and again, I'm going to hit the highlights of the highlights. I know you've got lots of things going on tonight, and I'm not going to skip over things that aren't necessarily important, but they're just things that I decided I thought were a couple of things that we want to talk about for a minute, and then we'll move on. So if I miss a couple of things here, it's not because I don't think they're important. A couple of things that we're really impressed with your facility management uh, the cross training that you're being doing, that you're doing with your food service people, and some of these things you may not even realize you're doing, we were very impressed with that. Um, lots of school districts don't do that, and in a smaller district, especially if you can't, if, if, if they can't do several functions, you're in trouble. Um, we we're going to talk about the library in a little bit, but this facility is one of the gems that you have in your community as well as as your school district, and you should be very proud of that. Under human resources, a couple of things. Uh, your parents and, and the Board of Education express satisfaction and pride in the overall quality. We were very impressed with your parent, the parent meeting we had. I can't remember now. I mean, we have, had 10, 10, 15, 20 people in there. And they're very, very um, complimentary. Uh, you as a board and also as a school district. They're, they're very proud of what they're doing. Uh, on page five, a couple of other things. We were very impressed with your uh, the benefits that you provide for all of your staff, for all those who work, I think, 17 and a half hours is what we've got down there. Not lots of districts are doing that. Also, it's a tremendous burden on your part. It might be something we might, I don't think we recommended a change in that, but, uh, but that's, a, that's a really positive. <coughs> a couple things under leadership. Uh, we were very 
impressed with the collaboration. The district has a cooperative agreement with one local school district share foreign language. We're going to talk about maybe doing more of those things. Not lots of schools do that, but that's really good that you're doing that. Um, we were extremely impressed with the, the, the newsletter. Josh, I don't know where you came up with that. I know that leadership person asked you that question, but uh, we're, we're going to assume that you made that up because that was really good. We were very impressed, and not very many people do it that way. Uh, a couple of things under teaching and learning. Um, the decision has been made to contract the Curriculum Leadership Institute. How's that going? Is that, that's, that's on tap for next year. Perfect. Well, we, we would recommend you keep that going. That's a great idea. And also the new administrative team talked about an upgrading technology for the use of teaching and learning. And hope that'll, you know, I think we're going to do some technology tonight. I'm going to get at it before they ask me to do something because I, that'd be, I'll be in trouble. Uh, on page six, a couple of recommendations. We're starting with facility management. Uh, I know that you have an existing roof inspection by EMC. Uh, our facility man indicated that, uh, that we re recommend that you evaluate the roofs to develop a schedule and, and uh, propose, these, uh, a pr propose those areas that can be repaired versus actually uh, uh, completely done over them. The roofs become, everybody wants to just defer that maintenance on those roofs, but we all know that if you have bad roofs, you've got bad buildings, period. And we, we give you some potential savings if you do it over a long period of time. Um, I know we're supposed to be here to try to give you uh, maybe a way to save money, but our number third recommendation is the district should evaluate the need for more custodians. Based on our, uh, we get some of our data from a, a, a place called the American School and University that gives lots of data in terms of how many custodians and those kinds of things per square foot and that type of stuff. Uh, we felt like based on the square footage that you have in these buildings, you're actually one and a half custodians shy of where you should be. It's just money. It's no big deal, right? But it, we, we want you to know that, and you probably already do know that. But I think the surveys indicate to us a large group of people talking about the cleanliness of the buildings, quite frankly. Um, and you've got buildings that some, some of the places are hard to get to. We all know that. Uh, under food service, uh, it's recommended the district consider closing the lunch hour. And boy, I tell you what, if you do that, that will be an interesting process if you do that. <laughs> However, based on our data, uh, you can obviously earn, save money, and I don't know if you have any issues whatsoever. Uh, and and it's, you have uh, apparently an agreement with the church to do something once a week that they furnish a meal. That's really a great idea. But that's something you might want to consider, and I don't know if you'd ever want to do it in the community. I probably, I'm guessing, the restaurants downtown wouldn't want us to do that, or wouldn't want you to do that. But maybe you want to wait two or three years before you do that, Josh, or get your new contract or something. Uh, out of human resources, a couple of things on page seven. It's recommended the district, uh, number two, it's recommended the district establish a continuous evaluation process for classified staff. Uh, unless we miss something, we're not seeing all of your classified staff evaluated on an annual basis. Um, and you need to check that out if you're not. We would recommend that you certainly do that and have some kind of a, a system by which to do that. I know your principals don't have enough to do, but they probably be more they'd be involved with that, obviously. Under the salary, wages, and benefits, we were very impressed with your veteran teachers. But as some of your teachers retire, we saw that your beginning salary was extremely low. Uh, and that might be a problem as you're hiring new people. Uh, but that's something to think about. And again, these are just money. Uh, the bottom of the page, on number one, under leadership, as recommended, the district engage the staff in the development of a new teacher evaluation instrument. And I'm not so sure if you might already be thinking about that. Done. And we certainly would agree that you need to do that for sure. Uh, number eight, uh, excuse me, page eight. Number two, it's recommended the district establish quarterly meetings with neighboring school districts. I know that you're already busy with them, but I think as time goes along with your agreement, with your articulated agreement with the district you're doing now, and you've got so many districts, I realize they're all 20 miles apart, but one of the ways you're going to have to survive is to have those kind of agreements with those kind of districts to be able to do more and more of those things uh, to save you money as well as keep your district viable. And the more things you can offer your students, the better off you're going to be. Uh, under finances, uh, the district should work, uh, number one, the district should work towards a financial solution, uh, working
working with your public library, and we realize there's three different groups of people that work with that, and it appeared to us that you're, uh, although you use the library a lot, you seem to have a disproportionate amount of money that you spend on it versus the other entities. Nothing that you probably are, don't already know. We've got a couple recommendations, and there'll be some more in the uh, in the full report about maybe what you might do about it. It's going to be a touchy situation and very difficult, but as your budgets are already becoming tighter, uh, you're going to have to look at that. And of course, I realize the city, county, and everybody else's budgets are pretty tight too. I saw something in the news today that um, a different group of people said that we're, we've overspent. Did you, anybody say that? $16 billion? And, and this was another group saying that, because there's been groups out there talking about how we're not spending enough, the taxes are going. Well, this is another group saying that we're, we're spending still too much. So there's going to be a lot of interesting comments in Topeka over the next year or two, I'm quite sure. That's enough of my editorial comments about Topeka. Page 9. Teaching and learning. Uh, it's number one under special population. Recommend the district continue to develop the MTSS structure at the elementary level and expand it to the secondary. I know you're working real hard at the elementary. I don't know how much the secondary is at this point. Uh, staff development. It's, it is recommended the district align staff development energies with the district goals and academic needs. I know you're trying to do that, but keep working on that to make sure that all your staff development is focused on your goals, not just what one person may want to do. And also keep working and usable, having usable and active technology plan because technology is going to be extremely important. The budgets are tight, so you've got to make sure you're, you're doing the best with a few dollars that you've got. On page 10 is some highlights of the surveys. Uh, to refresh your memory, we had five different groups of people that we surveyed. You as a board and administrators together, parents, students, uh, classified staff, and um, who am I missing, Josh? Teachers, certified staff. On the first one, a couple of highlights from the administrators, a couple of the, the commendations. All the responding administrators of the board said the, state, the students and faculty feel safe at school. Each, each one of the themes of our surveys have links to some, something else. In other words, for instance, safety. We want to know what, we're interested to see if, if, if there's an agreement or completely opposite of each different groups of people. One is safety, obviously curriculum is another issue, leadership types of issues, busing, that type of stuff. Um, virtually everyone felt, all groups of people felt really good and safe at school. And, and if you don't have a safe climate, you don't have anything. So we were very impressed with that. Uh, obviously, you feel really good about your the district's health insurance package. A couple of recommendations uh, that, that you see there. The majority of you felt that schools are not clean. Um, the majority of you felt that the district does not respond well to repairing and maintaining school facilities. The majority of you were not satisfied with the district's process for teacher evaluation. I know you're working on that. Uh, the next page, on page 11, on your classified, you had 22 uh, classified staff respond, and that's a really nice high percentage, Josh. I, don't, I can't, forgot the total number you got classified, but that's 60 or 70% or more. Or more. A couple of the commendations, uh, 20 of the responding of the 22 said the superintendent is respected as a community leader, 18 of the classified staff said the students feel safe at school, that's good. A couple of recommendations from the classified, the majority of the responding classified staff and I said for the dual credit, uh, obviously that you're going to see that a couple of things too, the dual credit college, uh, that type of stuff is something maybe you want to look at some more. Uh, parent surveys. I, we, we put them in, but you only had 36 parents respond. So I'd be really careful with their responses because that's not very many. Um, however, we thought you'd want to see what those 36 felt like. A couple of commendations. Uh, 30 responding parents said the teachers care about student need. They also felt the children feel safe at school. And again, they didn't feel schools were clean, and they really want you to work harder and look at the dual credit and college equipment. So. Under the student, you had 86. These would just be high school students. Or nine. I don't <laughs> think you did 7 through 12, did you guys? I think we just did 9 through 12, but I don't remember. 9? Yeah. yeah. So again, 86 of your students responded, so I think you would see uh, this is a pretty, uh, pretty good sample of your students. 
Majority of students thought that the building principals care about student needs. They also thought they felt safe at school. Um, I've got two or three little negative things in there, but there really was hardly any negative things coming from your students. Um, one of the things interesting, uh, and I didn't, I didn't even think about it until just a second, most kids will say lunches are terrible. Well, heck, your kids are going wherever they want, so they probably think lunches are great. So I will not talk about that one. Uh, but but they were, there were some comments from some of your students talking about advanced placement, dual credit, those kinds of things. Not a lot, of, not a significant. And really, other than that, there were not hardly any negative comments coming from your students, which which tells me they really have a lot of pride in your their, your schools, and, and you should be uh, committed for that. You had 20 teachers respond. Um, the uh, all the responding teachers thought the superintendent was effective in providing leadership for the school district. All the 20 teachers who responded um, thought the students and faculty feel safe at school. And that the responding teachers, all the responding teachers, said the building principals care about student needs. It's pretty good. A couple of recommendations. Uh, again, uh, the majority of them didn't feel the schools were clean. Uh, same thing about repairing uh, and maintaining schools in a timely fashion. And uh, the majority of this staff did not said that there's not an effective orientation program for new employees. Don't have lots of new employees, so I don't know where that comes from, but uh, that's what they said. And, and, of course, the bottom was 16 that felt the student in our report did not reward teachers for superior performance. That's the number one thing teachers always say. I know you'd like to respond and give them more, but that's the way it is. Um, that's our executive summary. I cannot thank you enough for allowing us to be here. Our, our team, again, I just want to reiterate, uh, uh, the team members that I bring generally have done these before, not not 50 of them like I've done, 61, that would be exact. Um, but they were very impressed with the St. John District, the administration, the board, uh, the things that you're trying to do for your kids. Uh, we would just say keep it up. Take these for what they're worth. They're uh, meant to be ideas for you to think about. Uh, lots of schools will take these and maybe make long-range plans out of them. It's something you're going to dismiss offhand on some of them, and some of them you're going to say, hey, we need to look at that and do something over the next few years. And again, I'll send you a full report, uh, but, but it'll, it'll, it'll just be more of, the, more of these kinds of things. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Any thoughts uh, initially from the board? Guys, have fun. Uh, were you were St. John's that happened to be at Stafford at the, at the uh, uh, track meet today? No, they're not the same. Way. Oh, okay. I uh, saw so buses everywhere at Stafford yeah. doing something. Yeah. Must have been a track meet, I guess. Yeah, we're waiting until it rains to have our. <laughs> well, that's just basically wait till tomorrow, right? Because yeah. it happens yeah. about every day. Yeah. 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 Thanks a lot. Thank, Thank you, Bill. Josh, keep yeah. in touch, and, and I'll send that to you. Okay. So we'll thanks. Thanks. Thank you. <clears throat> Now the question is what we're to from here. Um, having more information, I think, will help. But I think this needs to guide us over the next uh, few years to for our goals. This summer, we we'll sit down and look at our goals for the next few years. We'll use that information. So it's very helpful to, to help establish those and review how we're lining up with what we're currently doing. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to move on to item number two. There's not, no other discussion there. Teaching and learning presentation. Uh, Mrs. Fox and Mrs. Rockenbar are here to show us uh, what they are doing with the iPads in the classroom. So I've asked them to keep it to 10 minutes. So that's not very long. <laughs> and I know we'll have questions. Now, I do want to point out one thing. Uh, I don't think any of us expect. Uh, these are pretty powerful tools. It doesn't, it, it can be a game changer in the classroom. Uh, putting these tools in the hands of uh, bad teachers doesn't transform education. It's still the teacher that has the biggest impact on what those students learn. 
and uh, these should be tools of the teacher, not uh, in place. So I'll kind of show you some of these things. you guys have on, on yours. Um, we have a cart that, that we use in the classroom and usually we use them in small groups in kindergarten. Um, they've done really well, even five-year-olds you know, do really well with the iPads. Um, but I was just going to show you a few of the things that I use in my classroom. Uh, let's see. And I think maybe on yours there's this one. Um, yeah, I'll go back. It should look like this. Oh. <laughs> I can use more, but you get that further away from it. There. There. Uh, there. You just have to stay close to it. Okay. It looks like this one right here that has the um, B and the 1 on it. I'll just show you. Um, this is one that I like to do. Um, I do a lot of math stuff in centers with using the iPads. And then we also use the um, iPads for MTSS because you can do so many different things at so many different levels for whoever needs it. Um, but this math one is one that I like to use. It's got different um, things that they can do according to, to what they need. Um, you can change the difficulty. Um, we'll just do easy. Um, greater than, less than, and then it's, um, you know, a pretty easy, you know, and they, the kids love it. I mean, it's it's kind of a, um, a privilege that they get to do. They don't really know that they're learning something or practicing something because it's a game to them, but, um, so this is, this is one, um, Another one that I like to use, um, is Scribble Story. There's that on your iPads too. Um, it's a little purple square. Um, looks like this right here. Cooper's pen. Um, they can all buy story. You can go through and. Um, you just build your own book. I'm trying to get out of here. I've done anything you've done. There we go. There we go. All right. Um, so this was just a book that we've done in my classroom. We'll just go through and read it. Um, They can, you just go through the scribble story and you pair up words um, with the pictures and they go through. It's an interactive book. They're making a book um, of their own. And then we've, as a group, gone through and shared our books that we write in kindergarten, um, which is just filling in basically one word. Um, You go through, this is how it starts. I, I don't know if some of you... Um, this book is all about me, I am a, and then you can just tap it and it goes through and changes um, whatever the, the word is. They can build their own book. Um, I have clip art in it. You know, in kindergarten, you think this is a lot of things for them to remember and do, but they catch on a lot quicker than I thought they would. And... Um, so I, I guess just the way that um, I use the iPads in my classroom is just I can use the iPads at many different levels for many different kids, you know, all at the same time, just um, pairing them with their ability. And then Julie's going to talk more about some reading um, things with her iPads.
Okay, I'm going to show you my two favorite ones that I like to do. I work with the Title I kids, and this is really nice because I can do things on their level. I can have them do stories. Um, but what I really like, I love Bits for, it's the one that looks like four little white squares. Sorry, I went back too fast. Its board looks like this one right here. Four little white squares. And then within Bits board, they have their own catalog. And so you can download all different kinds of things from their catalog. And um, one of the favorite ones that I did with the kindergartners when they're doing consonant vowel consonant words with each of the different vowels, um, I can pick the A vowel. And then each bits board that you go into has these eight different type of quizzes that they do, which is really cool. The first one is mainly just flashcards, gives them a name, a word, I mean, along with the picture. This is really good also for the ELL kids because some of the ELL kids don't know what we call some of our things. Um, This is a free one. Yeah, this is, oh, yeah, this is a free one. Uh -huh. And then, okay, so this is like the first little test that you do, and then you go back into it again, and the second one, it says the word, and they have to pick the right picture. And so you click it, and you go all the way through, and it, it's actually a test, and it'll tell you that you get 100% or 80%. And I make them keep doing it until they get 100%. And like, you know, like a lot, and if they don't hear it, do it again. A lot of kids didn't know what the tap was. I just want to show you what the test looks like. Yeah, make sure you don't want to I know. <laughs> oh, I didn't Pressure. <laughs> Gap. There you go. So they get that, and they are so proud when they can get 100%, especially the first time. They're all excited. And then we go back, and we go, we go back to the, and we go to the next one, and it's a true or false one. It says the word, and, and if it's the right picture, you say yes. That's not ram, so they have to say no. Okay, rag, that's not a rag. Okay, so that's that one. I just want to show them all really quick. The next one is a match-up one, where they match the, the name with the picture, and they just pull it over. Okay. The next one is a pop quiz, where it shows the name, and you have to pick the right one. Okay, the next one is a guy where... They have to read it themselves. It doesn't say it for them this time. They have to read it and pick the right picture. So that's making them have to do it. The next one is building the word. They have to pull the word down. And this is really good, especially for kindergartners, because we teach them to do it on their arm to hear every single sound. And so this way they have to do it. This is all beginning reading stuff, which is really good for them. And the last one is spelling it. They have to spell it. Okay, that's my bits board. And there are like 36 pages of stuff in their catalog that you can download. And, you know, I've only downloaded maybe 50, 30 maybe, 30 or 40 or 50. There's just tons of stuff. You can get any subject. I did time with the second graders when they were having trouble with time. I've got the states on there for the fourth graders because they're learning their states and the capitals. That's on there. So you can do it. There's a whole bunch of different levels. Easy to older kids. Okay, another one that I really love for my older kids, especially, is Farfaria. This is a new one that we got. And it is called the Netflix of books. You can get on here and get books and all different subjects, all different. It's just a great thing. I just love it. 
I start the kids exploring the world. There are all these different places they can go. Animal Kingdom, Adventure Island, Fairy Tales, Classics, Fable Hills, Bedtime Bluffs, Looney Lagoon, Goodland, Sing Along City. It's just a new one they put on that has books with that are songs, like The Wheels on the Bus, and they actually do the song to go along with the book. It's pretty cool. Picture Point is mainly for preschool kids or really early kindergarten. A lot of the books don't um, have words. They just have pictures and they go along. Um, I have the kids, I'll just go into fairy tales. They go into fairy tales and then if they, once they get into fairy tales, there's a whole bunch of books and they can just go through. They're leveled from one to four. Uh, that's not grade level. Level four is about a high second grade level. So depending on the kids I have in my room at the time, I can have them uh, pick a book that I think is on their level, and then I'll just pick one here. These are really good because they'll read it to them. So I have them go through it once where it reads them the story. And it reads the story for them all the way through. And then I, I have them read it again. This time they have to read it themselves. So they'll go through and then they have to read it. Go through and read it. And the pictures are really neat on these stories too. Um, there is a few that when you touch the picture it would even do stuff. Which really excites them when they can do something like that. So these are really good because it reads to them. They listen to it. They read it themselves. Then I can ask them questions or I can have them tell me. Uh, the three most important things of the story, or what happens at the beginning, the middle, or the end. I could have them write me something about their story for the comprehension. Um, so I just love these. And there's so many books that you can get to. I mean, anything they're interested in, you'll find on here. So it's been really fun for the kids, and they get a really big kick out of it. They love it. There's another one called Big Cats, but I think I'm probably out of time. <laughs> but they, can, they can make their own story and add their little figures and stuff. So, Anyway, I love this because I love being able to do things on different levels in my room. Some kids are better readers than others, and so if I can find something for one kid to do and something else for another kid to do, and we're doing it at the same time, but yet they're all learning at their own level. So I think that's really important. Can you use <coughs> earbuds with these? Yes, we use earbuds. And for the kindergartner kids, I have little headphones because the <coughs> earbuds don't want to stay in their ears. But Did yeah. you guys get enough earbuds? You're still short? Um, in my room, I just use the headphones that we have on our computers, our regular computers already. So it's fine if we do just small groups, which is what we do. What, uh, what would you say you're able to do with these that you couldn't normally do? How has it changed what you're doing? Um, for me, reading can be really boring for kids, especially if they have a hard time reading. And so this is really exciting for them to be able to do this. You say iPad, and they just think, oh, great, this is just awesome. They love to come to my room to read, which is really fun for a change. So it's a way to get them more excited about reading. Um, you know, they're all, their brains are wired different than ours were when they are young. They love anything that's technology, and they're so good at it, and they just think it's the greatest thing ever. And they almost think reading a book is like playing a game. I mean, they just think it's great. So I really like that. And I agree, you know, the, the touching mm -hmm. and doing something different, you know, like I said earlier, they don't realize that they're learning something because it's a game, like it's a something game. that's fun. And you can, there's so many different apps that you can find for whatever you need. You know, this person needs help with, you know, phonemic awareness, and this person, you know, needs help with, you know, reading. You know, they've already learned to read and they're taken off, and so it's good to be able to pair them how... How they? Mm -hmm. How are you finding the apps? I mean, are are they? Are you, you networking just, with other teachers to know well, what the good ones are? Or? There's a lot of times if we find something, you know, we let each other know this one is really good and it's free. You know, I, almost all of the apps that I've used are free. But you just go into the app store and you search for, um, you know, I need help with um, greater than, less than, and a whole bunch of stuff pops up. 
So like 1,700 different things. That's the hard, <laughs> that would be the hard part, yeah. sorting through what, yeah. what a good one is. Yeah. It's, it's so it's nice part. to be able to, you know, work with other teachers and ones that they've used <coughs> and, and things. But, yeah. Any other questions? I just really want to add this because to me what I think is awesome is Again, this is just a really powerful tool for really good teachers because we know things like parallel teaching and differentiated <coughs> instruction are research-based instructional strategies that work with kids. But if I'm going to give you a group of kids and say, okay, you're going to teach reading right now, but you've got 20 kids at about 10 different levels, get your stuff together. But this helps you get that stuff together. So yeah, all the kindergartners are working on reading or like the scribbleless story, but it, it is parallel because we've got the high kids able to function at their level and the kids that need more help able to function at their level and it, it makes stuff that we learned about in school happen without the intense amount of time it would take for you to gather materials to do that kind of instruction without a tool like this. Mm -hmm. I think it's, I mean it is, it's amazing and the kids are engaged and... Yes, very yeah. engaged. I mean, all of them, once they get on there, they're just glued to the iPad. It's amazing to me. And I went to a, a class last week um, on iPads and one of the things that one of the teachers said which I really liked was, you know, if you only had 20, 30 minutes and you're working on a project with kids on the iPad, it's not the fact that you get done with that project. It's the doing it that is the learning part for them. So think of it, it's the do, not the done. That's what they said. Because it's the actual process of them going through and learning the things as they're doing it. That, that's what they're learning. I mean, it's not the actual product that you need to worry about at the end. They'll get that, but it's actually working on it, <coughs> and I've had second graders showing me things on the iPad, mm -hmm. and I'm like, that's really cool, where did you learn that, you know, and they'll teach me, and I just think that's great, that, you know, they have the confidence, they're showing their self-confidence in knowing something, and they're learning, and they're teaching me something, and I tell them, like, we had a free day, I promised them this since the beginning, and I had never done it, so this last week I said, okay, you can do any app you want to. And a lot of them got on one they learned in art class from Mrs. Binky, and that's where one of them showed me how to do it. I thought that was so cool. You know, um, none of them got on ones that I thought, you know, that they wouldn't. I mean, they got on math ones. They got on other reading ones. They wanted to do a story. I mean, they did things that I would have asked them to do, but they did it on their own because they thought it was so fun. So, and they were all learning, and they thought it was the greatest thing ever because they got to do whatever they wanted, you know. So, I think it's a great teaching tool, and it's good incentive, too, because um, if they don't work hard on them, if I see them messing around, then we don't do iPads for a day or two, because, and they want them back, so they'll work hard to get them back, so. And Darlene put a lot of the projects that she had her art kids do with the iPads in the display next door, so her stuff set up over there. We're speaking of that, we had the art art show display, so mm -hmm. get back before you leave if you get a chance. Right. <coughs> Any other like questions? On, on, <laughs> on, <laughs> on, on, <laughs> way. Yeah. Sorry. Thank you. Thanks, ladies. You're welcome. Come off this play anytime. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't these little blue covers cool yeah. for the littler kids? You don't have to worry about them. <laughs> I thought that was the board members. No more to lay up. Alright, we're ready to move on to item number three, fee schedule. Um, the, uh, we have that on page, page 27. Not uh, big changes at all on the fees. Uh, the claim is for band to be optional for most. <clears throat> Our instrument rental fee is, uh, is very reasonable. Uh, so we'll need to bump that up to keep 
we have fewer kids in bands uh, to keep that uh, keep some revenue in that fund to help pay for instruments and uh, repairs, uh, textbook fees. Uh, no change there. The breakfast and lunch prices need to go up by a dime. Uh, USDA requires us to. We need to be at a certain level. I can't quote the number right now, but what they don't want to happen is that we're getting uh, a certain prize for uh, free and reduced lunches reimbursed to us, and they don't want schools to be using that to subsidize everybody's lunches. So we need to be uh, in line with the fee that they suggest. So. Uh, they can only require us to raise it by 10 cents in one year. So that's the, uh, the additional fee there for breakfast and lunch prices. <clears throat> Mr. President, I move we uh, the board approves the <coughs> schedule for the 2013-14 school year. Mr. Second. We move and second to approve the fee schedule for the 13-14 school year as presented. Is there any further discussion? Bring that. All in favor? Again. Opposed? Same sign. Seven up. <coughs> Supplemental positions for 13-14. Uh, you have on page 20 your list of uh, supplemental positions. Um, there's several to be determined. Still, uh, and Mr. Berger and I are working to fill those as we can. Uh, so I'm asking the board to approve my recommendation is uh, to approve this list as presented, and we'll take action on the rest of them as we fill them. Hopefully, the remainder of them at our next meeting. <laughs> Coach Bergen and Coach Meyer on the list. Yes. Since this time, she would do a National Honor Society. Okay. All right. uh, National Honor Society, uh, uh, Sheila Witt, so we can add that. So, on your motion, uh, it would be with the exception of Mrs. Witt for National Honor Society. As amended. Mm -hmm. okay. Mr. President, I move the board approve the supplemental positions for the 2013 14 year as amended. Second motion. I move and second to approve the <coughs> supplemental positions for the 2013 14 as presented with um, additions. Missions. Any discussion? All in favor, right hand. Both same sign. Six up. Uh, the legal assistance fund. Uh, this is for uh, Kansas Association of School Boards uh, dues and legal assistance fund. Uh, they have raised their fees uh, for both the, the dues and the legal uh, assistance fund. We get a lot of good out of this organization with uh, uh, their efforts in uh, the State House. Uh, also, uh, the Legal Assistance Fund. I call them uh, on a monthly basis, uh, sometimes uh, two, three, four times a month, uh, to get advice on issues anywhere from uh, student discipline issue to a teacher discipline issue to a liability issue. Um, so it's it's well worth uh, the money there, and uh, they would have they would represent us uh, depending on how significant the legal defense would be. Uh, they would represent us uh, with potential extra cost. But, uh, it's a great service. So uh, my recommendation is to uh, approve the membership and legal assistance fund agreement. That agreement, actual agreement, is on page 31 of your 
of your packet. <coughs> Mr. Prestel, who the board approves the uh, fees, membership fees for the KASB for the 2013 school. I second that. Good move and second to approve the membership of the KASB and the Legal Assistance Fund Agreement for the 2013 14 school year. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, right hand. Opposed, same sign. 7 0. Thanks. Step, staff handbook change. Uh, very minor changes uh, here to the staff handbook. We did we had one for elementary and one for the junior high and high school teachers. This is, is mainly focused on our instructional staff uh, in the classroom, not uh, it's not for all classified uh, staff. So some minor changes. We did put a note in there that this is uh, expectations and guidelines and the negotiated agreement and board policies take precedence. But the trick is when you when you have several different areas where you have policy, you need to declare which one takes precedence. So we did that. Uh, the changes were highlighted, uh, nothing of real significance. So I'm recommending that uh, the board approve the handbook with those changes. If there's any questions, I'd be glad to answer them. Mr. President, I move the board approve the staff handbook as presented. Second. Then move and second to approve the staff handbook as presented. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, right hand. Those same sign, 7 0. Uh, added agenda items. We're ready for item number one there, summer work schedule. Um, one thing, uh, uh, been tossing around is, is having a four day work week during the summer. Uh, shut off uh, all utilities for the weekend. So instead of for our regular 40 hour employees, instead of doing uh, you know five eight hour days, we do four tens. So save a little bit on utility costs. Um, also, with uh, you know, you reduce the number of times we shut down and pick back up. If we're working on the floor, we have to. Or painting, you know, I have to shut down, put everything away for lunch, for breaks, end of the day. You know, you reduce that by one day. Uh, I really think we can get more done that way. Um, you know, I mean, the office and everything would be shut down uh, on Friday. And hopefully, also another side benefit would be that you know, folks have appointments or need to take a day off. Try to do that on Friday when we don't have work. Reduce the number of days there. So I don't have hard numbers for you here. It's difficult to quantify um, how much we would save. But, uh, but I just uh, I'm looking for your guidance on the, if that would be an acceptable practice for us to give that a shot this summer. If you're doing that across the board, everybody, mm -hmm. the amount, is there any deliveries or? Of any supplies and stuff that would be missed, like UPS, and, and we could schedule that. We, yeah, we see them about every day. So they would. Yeah. Okay. So we would communicate that to them. I think it sounds like a good idea. Okay. Gives them an extra day to enjoy. Okay. All right. Well, I, they, we don't need any action on this. It'd just be a sure. scheduling issue. And we wouldn't do that. So. They don't have a problem with it? No. They'll just, they'll do what you say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I guess if they don't come in Friday and work when the air conditioner's done on, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it would be a better setup overall. You know, we, don't, we, you know, we don't have a lot of regular business to do that the office has to be open and everybody has to be there. So. We'll, we'll try it and evaluate it. All right. <clears throat> Item number two, capital improvements. Uh, if you recall in December, we had the 360 energy engineers come out and uh, do an energy assessment, just a preliminary look at our facilities. 
they focus mainly on energy improvements. The idea is that they could identify areas of savings and uh, guarantee those savings and uh, theoretically the savings would pay for any project uh, over the long term. Uh, they'll guarantee that it will pay for the project, but they can guarantee the savings. If you don't achieve those savings, they'll pay the money, uh, the difference. Um, the roof replacement is one of our big needs coming up that we're going to have to take care of, uh, which on the, the roof assessment we had several years ago, it was estimated at $240,000. So we don't have the cash on hand to take care of that. Uh, we can't use all of our cash in that fund. Uh, so that's one, one large need we need to take care of. Our HVAC system here in the library uh, needs to be taken care of a couple of years ago. Uh, it's, it's really on its last leg. So there's a couple of big items. Uh, they've identified in this assessment uh, some lighting, windows, a few other small projects. So one avenue to take care of this would be to work with a company like this and, uh, and lump all those things into a project. A company like this, they could guarantee some energy savings. Now the roof isn't going to be energy savings, but we could easily lump it into a project like this. Uh, it wouldn't necessarily mean we have to have a, a bond issue to pay for some of these. I don't see that large of an expense, but it would require some uh, debt financing like a capital lease purchase agreement um, and allow us to uh, make a payment over up to 10 years. Uh, so this is, is by no means comprehensive of what, what we need to do, but this is one avenue. They charge uh, for that service, much like a general contractor would. Uh, there's a little added cost for the energy savings guarantee. And I've included a comparison with another similar company that does this, these uh, energy savings guarantees. <clears throat> Joaquini recently went through that, and they show uh, some differences there in their projects. Uh, I'm familiar with the one that they, they showed here, Schneider Electric. Um, school district I was familiar with, they went through the process, and then it got down to the end, and they were flat, the board was uh, taken aback by how much they would be making a profit, and service fees, and all these other, other things. So I asked him up front, what what are all those things uh, going to cost us? And uh, you see their project overhead and profit. They shoot for 15% here. And then there's the engineering and the commissioning would be another 9%. So you're looking at 20 to 30%. Uh, a general contractor uh, would be roughly that. So <clears throat> I'm looking for some direction on this. Uh, whether we would want to pursue something here, another option would just be go the architect and pay as we go. Uh, allow them to hire the engineers as needed, uh, design the projects. I asked him to send me an updated schedule. So what, what would happen next if we pursued this was we'd sit down with them and identify some priorities in some areas of, uh, that they've suggested other things that, that we think we need. Uh, administrators, maybe a board member or two, uh, maybe a community representative to go through some of those things. Then they would come back and do a preliminary <coughs> audit, a little more detailed. Uh, then they would review that with the Board of Education and then we would decide whether or not to move forward. There would be no money due <coughs> until that time where we decided to move ahead and do the investment grade audit, which they would bring in more engineers and do the, the actual uh, designing of the project and, and start with the big ticket items. How long does the roof last? 
going to have to re redo it. I, I don't know. I don't I mean, know what you kind of time to frame. Do something for ten years. And right. Years it's got to be done. Yeah. Yeah. I the uh, the roof assessment I believe has the age of the roof on there. Can get you that information, and this would need to be something that we have somebody look at and decide: is this still valid? Is this still what we need to do? And that would be part of this process, not just having them come in and and us telling them and hey, give us a new roof because somebody said we needed to. We need to evaluate that need again, see if it still is a need or if. Maintenance can uh, take care of that. I'm <clears throat> probably having a little trouble understanding why we would need to do that, do this. Rather um, than just doing it ourselves and or someone needs to serve as a general a, contractor. Right, but and, yeah, if I, if you got a roof project, you're gonna work on the roof. <clears throat> Project but there's probably right. lots of different ways you can approach doing a <coughs> roof project, and that's where your recommendation on. Uh, well, Here, here's an example. On the roof, we would have to come up with specifications for the bid process. Right, right. I don't have the expertise to do that. No, no, none of our staff does. Don't we, don't we hire a architect in the past or that's something? That's the fee. That he's talking about. Yeah. But what's the, what's that architect fee compared to? Plus the management of the architect and lining up the people to do the work. And choosing the architect, yeah. which right. several so of them may is, uh, have different ways of approaching the same problem. And you may pay, yeah. you know, right. say, a $400,000 roof. You probably will pay $30,000 in the architect. Right. Yeah. Minimum. Yes. And, you know, so we would have to pay somebody to give us the bid specs and uh, so and then and then manage the bid process. That's so just one. How, yeah. how how have we always done this in the past? Is this different? Well, the roof we've always gone through the architect, but we haven't really done anything with the efficiency. This is more of the efficiency aspect of things. I have looked at, had somebody do that for the efficiency, of lighting, heating. Management of that. So part of this is is finding those efficiencies, and and lights, windows, air conditioning, and then the roof and uh, other things. I don't, I don't know scoreboard. I mean that's something that we can take so care of. So are you doing the whole I mean, finding the person that will do the work. Yes, they would. They would spec all of the bids. And they would. They would make the final shot of who would come in and do it. The board would make those decisions based on. So we can way. use local people, whoever we choose, based on who has bid. On this one page, it kind of shows you what they did with Joaquini in comparison to another. I don't know what Esco is. And it is kind of interesting to see how they redesign and the other ones was just going to upgrade and that's on one of the pages. Yeah, and I asked him to present that because I, I am familiar with some of these companies and what they do. And it kind of looks like they don't just come in and replace it, they actually look to see how they can change it to be more efficient where the other companies would just come in and say, okay, we'll just replace that. You know, so and if utility costs and things keep raising <clears throat> as they're supposed to be doing, it might be good to look at somebody that can redesign it to make it more efficient or building if there's a possibility of doing that. Well, a lot of it's going to be, I know that, you know, heating and air, there's more efficient stuff out there. The question is, is the weight of do you have the dollars to do the replacement? Is it going to pay for itself in that 20 year lifespan or 25 year lifespan to replace it? I mean, that's a $10,000 question. We know we have out there enough, but then are you willing to pay for it?
And we can go we can go hire an engineer that doesn't have anything to do with the energy savings, uh, or an architect, and have them spec all those things. And uh, Tom, we can do those. You know stuff. It, about is this page sixty one? Is this just examples of stuff, or is this specific for our needs? This is an example of okay, okay, okay. of. Uh, of a project that they did. Basically, the, the 360 people are, are acting as general contractors and architects all in one. Is that correct? Yeah, well, yes. They, they would be taking on the whole project. Think of them like a general contractor and engineer. Their, their firm is serving as a general contractor, and they're also doing the engineering and design work. So rather than hiring a general, general contractor that would hire the engineering out. Uh, do we have to lump everything that they say that we need done, do we have to lump all that into one project or can we pick and choose? We can do whatever do? we want. We, yeah. So like something like replacing the windows I would think would be relatively simple for us to get done it is. without them yeah. having to do. So uh -huh. we can pull that out of their we could. project whereas replacing the roof, nobody knows anything. Well, they, <laughs> they leave. We know that. They just do that. <laughs> yeah. Right. That's what I. Yeah. Okay. And well, how far did you save before we'd have to start paying money? We would go through uh, another. They called it a preliminary engineering audit. So we would visit with them about <clears throat> what our needs are and and wants. And they've for already our facilities. they've already done a study of what they think we need. A, a very preliminary one, yes. Okay. They, they got our utility bills, came out and walked the facility, and and then I don't know what a the preliminary engineering audit would be beyond that. Uh, that would be the step after we visit with them and identify some needs and priorities. So these are some things that are concerning to us. Uh, let's look at those things. And they would complete that engineering audit then review that with us and then the next step would be do we want to go through the investment grade audit where they dig deeper and, uh, and then start the design uh, and bid process. That's when money would be due. It wouldn't be due then, it's lumped into the project, but at, at the, that's when we would put pen to paper and sign an agreement. And sometime during that process, we would be able to <clears throat> go over what they've recommended and either pull something out or, or maybe even add to. Even until we accept bids, we could take anything or, or leave it off. And even up to that point before we sign that agreement, we can just say, we don't want to do this, see you later. Okay. There's nothing involved. No payment due. So, maybe is this a subject to the agreement that, that we enter? How many year long commitment this is? Or how many projects that encompasses? For them, no. It, they, there's something involved with how long they will track the energy savings and report that to us. Uh, but beyond that, uh, it's you'd pay for it just like if you had hired just a general contractor. No, I, I'm, I'm just thinking a new air conditioner for the library. Uh -huh. And we're going to pay these people to design it, be the general contractor, and then pay them a portion of what our cost savings would be if we got a new system. Because didn't they get something for the energy that they are we supposedly saved by what they recommend. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, but if you just went to Tom and said, Tom, this is the specs that uh, we need, we're not going to have to pay Tom an extra amount of money for what we would be keeping in our pocket. Or am I not looking at this right? Are you talking about just to? For the energy savings part of that. Yes, the energy yeah. savings part. See, I, 
I have a there's problem. There's probably more variables I have than a your, problem your, your, given There's that not just one way to design a, an air conditioning system. There, there is one aspect of this right now. They have a guarantee of that. If they don't get it, they, they take away part of what they are. I believe I agree with stuff, right? They guarantee certain percentage. And that's part of what you, what you would do. But, but, but if I was going to save $100,000 by putting in a new unit, and then I have to give them 50 of that, why did I give them 50 when I could have just had the unit fit in? Well, I get to save 100000 in energy over a period of time. Yeah, it's not quite that dramatic. Well, uh, yeah. yeah, it's just yeah. throwing mm -hmm. things out. I see what you're saying. I mean, don't we already have some stuff on what we need for the air conditioning in this what? building right here? Nothing specific. No. Nothing specific. What? Nothing specific. Who, did, who did Maxville go through for their project? See, I'd like to know what they did. They got a grant, didn't they, to pay for their... Energy efficient. I'm pretty sure that Justin said they had a grant. Any anything that you're doing, you're going to either pay the architect or you're going to invest. That's a grant. And I think they're this. doing what, what they're doing both. <laughs> it really takes the load off of him having to. If you work with the architect and design something, then he's going to have to solicit for the bids and verify that those bids all meet match. Well, <coughs> you're paying for someone to analyze and match that up. That has the expertise in it. Here's what uh, what we could easily do is move ahead and start this ball rolling and get an architect or an engineer involved, somebody that could do the uh, uh, the general contracting on that and look at their fees side by side. And uh, a lot of those architecture firms are not going to spend a lot of time without wanting money due. Yeah. Initially, I think Dr. Kenworthy contacted the ar an architect, uh, the architect or a architect, about the air. Yes, uh, we, have, we have a report, and it's okay. not specific enough to really do anything right. with. To, to replace, they don't go yeah. into, mm -hmm. they say, yeah, I need to replace. Yeah, Basically. yeah, and they, they give three options of, uh, of a direction to head. One of the, I, I understand where you're coming from, Stan, and I think, I think the way you think, but well, be careful. Uh, well, on that <laughs> issue, I think we, uh, I think we have to. The, the school has to operate a little differently as far as we can just call down the local guy and say, "Yeah, put this in." You now, where we we're going to have to be. Uh, held liable for making sure that this is the proper way to do it. The only way to do that is to hire an architect or a firm like this to make sure that all the specs are done correctly. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, I was just wondering if all firms do the act. You're thinking it would be cheaper just to hire an architect about with the specs and then well, and then we let it out for bids and let them do it. I would guess that the same, that different professionals aren't going to even come to the same conclusion as to what size of unit you need. Some are. I, I know they won't have had experience with it. Depends on the level of efficiency that we are comfortable with. Yeah. And some are going to want to engineer it so that it's not working as hard, and others are going to say that a smaller unit is sufficient and. You know, there's just going to be differences of professional opinion, I think. Here's, a, here's what I can easily do. is is w w The next step with these folks would be to meet with them and discuss our needs and where we need to head with our big projects, with our smaller projects, and where we want to be down the road. Uh, get some of those things lined out. And uh, I've, I've talked to a few architects. We have the one that worked on the uh, HVAC system. And actually, when he did that, he called an engineer to do it. But I can easily call them and say, here's what we want to do. What do you propose? And what are your fees? And how is this all going to work?
Maybe in the meantime, you can talk to Maxfield and find out well, who they had to go with. Being a grant, they might have had to go with somebody in particular. I don't know. Here's, you were saying earlier that the fees with this 360 bunch was relatively the same as hiring an architect. Yeah, and that be that would allow doing that. What I just suggested would allow us to see that. And I don't know how specific an architecture firm would get on that, what they're going to charge, but right. but there is some fee tied up in the energy savings part of it. There's no there's no doubt about that. You know, they're not. They're not going to do that for free. It's, there is no doubt about that. There is going to be, of course, yeah. an additional uh -huh. cost. Any unit you put in is going to save over what we currently have. Oh, no. Sure. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. that's, I, you're, you're, you're hired, Stan. I, I can do it. I can do it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> when, is, when do you need a decision on this? Uh, if I could have direction on the, what we what the board would like me to do on that, if we're okay moving ahead and visiting with this firm about that, uh, no agreement is is necessary yet. Uh, you know, we're looking at on the timeline uh, to even do that would be uh, into September before we would need to make that decision. You said that Walt King has used this company. Yes, Is there right. Talk to other them. other districts in the state that have used this company or yeah. other businesses. Yeah, I, I've talked to the superintendent at Walt King, and he was very happy with what they um, what they did and what they got uh, there. I asked him if they would do the same thing again. Mm -hmm. So absolutely, we do it just like we did. I don't think I've heard anything. I talked to him. I don't either. I, I like to put money down. General overview of the whole. <clears throat> all the projects we're looking at. Right. You know, and they're big enough capital projects, and being able to work with them to pay it over a ten-year period might be, you know, better on that. Knowing what we have those fees, and then you're not depleting your cash flow. So they charge the interest with this? And the financer would be separate. We're paying them a, a, a fee, basically a percentage fee, to to manage the project. So we'd have to go through somebody else to do the financing. Yeah, and they would help us with that. We can use local financing if we need to, if, if we'd like. Let me see. Yeah. Where are these folks at? Uh, Kansas City. What made this company stand out rather, rather than other companies? They came, he came into business with me, uh, dropped by and said, hey, I want to do this. He was in the area. They had been working with Kinsley on some stuff. And uh, I wasn't real interested at, at first because I know uh, that Schneider, the company I mentioned earlier, it was, it was quite a bit higher than he, It was about 30%, 30 or 35% that they were charging for administrative and overhead and, and all of that. It seemed ridiculous. So I wasn't really interested. Uh, so then I called him back and said, show me your fees. You know, if we go into this with eyes wide open, knowing this is what it's going to cost us, uh, I'd feel more comfortable about doing that. So they're basically just like an architectural firm, mm -hmm. except yeah. they follow through with the project. Yeah, engineering firm, and then they, they utilize this, the energy savings uh, and guarantees. That's part of what they do. So they focus a lot on those things. Um, and they, their work at Kinsley, they, they passed a bond issue, and they worked with Kinsley, and they decided, listen, it's, you don't need us to do this work. So they were just able to uh, hire their own architect and do do each project individually and, and do it that way. So for them it made more sense to do that. Well it doesn't sound like they're too pushy if mm -hmm. they let you do your own project. Yeah. <clears throat> I 
Campbell, I, I watched a grant this year that was not ready to apply for, but it was oriented toward a school adopting energy saving type of things. But if we were able to document in a way that I bet something like this would help us document all the things that we are doing, maybe we could be competitive for those type of opportunities if they were to come around. You know? Grant writing is easy when there's a plan behind it. <laughs> <laughs> That giving you a direction. It is that consensus to move, go ahead and move forward with this, and then uh, we're not signing the line, and I just give him some direction. I will call an architect as well. Okay. Um, along those lines, we also have uh, our scoreboards are in need of replacement. Uh, so there's another fairly big ticket item that we'll need to take care of very soon. Uh, our track. I've got a gentleman coming in tomorrow to look at our track. We're due for the, the they say it's level two maintenance, uh, which is roughly twenty thousand uh, dollars on a fourteen-year-old track that's designed to last ten years. So uh, it's a matter of do we want to uh, do we want to put money into that. Is it worth putting money into that if it's just going to need replaced? It's not 14. No, it's been three years. Three years ago? Yeah. 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 Well, well yeah. 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 they put all new rubber, rubber down. Yeah. They took all the rubber off and put new on or yeah. coated it. Just coated it. I think that's what we're dealing with. From what I understand is that it was it was coated about maybe three years ago, three or four years ago. So it's time to take the rubber off and put the rubber on instead of recoating it. Yes. How many levels are there? You said this is level two. Three. I think the level three would be the recoating. And the level two is what we're due for is a little more significant. I don't have all those. Like but anyway, it was a lot. Like it felt like a couple years yeah. ago. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and I think that's I, I think to to tear it off and replace all the 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 surfaces, you know, well over a hundred thousand dollars. Well, I'm sure that's what we did because we spent like a hundred some thousand dollars up there yeah. on that track. We need to find out. Uh, and that's why the gentleman is coming. So yeah, what well, we did, because yeah. well, it should be in the record someplace. And the reason I bring it up is because that's another. I remember the time has flown. I just we've done so many different projects, and I can't tell you. And we have done well, six, track. three, or four I, projects. The track it's project has been done. done, but we've done so many things since I've been on here. I just lose track of time. It could have been five years ago. It could have been three years ago. Did they ever get the announcer? Speakers taken care of. Yeah, yeah. We used the old sound system from the gym. Put that out there. So that's another thing we'll have to take care of at some point. So, and the reason I bring up the track is because uh, you know that's another big ticket item. That uh, how do we? Uh, when do we take care of that? So you're just saying, to keep yeah, in our mind. Yeah, yeah, we're going to have to lump all these things together and do it all in one year. We, no, we, we don't have to. Well. We, yeah, we can do whatever needs to be done. So that's, that's what I wasn't clear about the idea of if we worked with them on several bigger projects, would it be something that we are con they're performing general contracting services over the course of two or three years, or or is it a no? No, and I'm not saying that we need to take care of take all of these things and try to get them done in one year, but knowing that they're there, that we will have to take care of them affects how we make those decisions. And the track may may last another three, four years. I don't I don't know the answer to that. So if somebody uses our isn't it being used by another school for our league track meet? Yeah. Do they pay anything or is it just yeah. a free gratis thing? They don't pay anything. We get the concessions from it. Or whoever's doing it. Because they're not doing the concessions. 
that's worth something, Bob. So yeah. did the contractor tell you the does the track did he contact you and so said that you're due for level two? No, I called him and asked where are we in our maintenance schedule. So we you don't have, have records of what we've done? Not not very accurate. We have some of it, but not all of it. Well, no, Julian, can you pull up previous yeah. records right now, or do you have no, to go back? I, and not right now. I have to go back to my office. The, the so company that up. we've mm -hmm. used is we've used for a lot of years, and they've got records. He can there. tell me. He, he can tell me exactly what we did and when we did it. And, and, and he, he may have answers. Yeah, you're up for it, but it looks like it's pretty good. We can put it off one more year or two more years. I know he's done that. Well, I know, was it last year or year before when the, it was getting some cracks and stuff? Well, that's and it came we, out. Uh, that's not why we resurfaced it, though. You know, it's been it's been a, about three years or four years, because I remember when they put it down, they had some bubbles now. It's all yes. coming back. Yeah. And so it almost seems like it's been almost five years. So if we've gone five years and haven't done anything, we well, we did do something. But we did. Cracks, and then, like I said, we had, I remember in a high jet, we had a bunch of bubbles, bubbles in it, there. and they went up and drilled holes, and they did on Humidity was a factor. And so that was when we had a lot of rain. And I know it's been at least, it hadn't been the last two summers. Right. It's, been, right. it's been in the last three and a half years because it's been since I've been. It might have been this. right after you came yes. on, but it, it had, wasn't the last two summers. Yes. I know that. Because you go down there and squish. Walking around the, in there with the water under the mat. Yeah. So generally, every three years there is a maintenance. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was every so other, other year. No, it's every three. three. Uh, you can squeeze that sometimes to four and five, depending on what needs to be done. Down to AstroTurf. Make a running crack. Mm -hmm. You want to? Tornado, that bar. <laughs> so, you so have the information you need on that? I do, yes. Okay. All right, let's move on to communications then. Uh, board member activities and reports. We'll start over here at this side. Chad, do you have anything? Um, this past month, I attended the Honors Luncheon put on by the National Honor Society. Um, I'd like to thank Mrs. Seekies for coordinating that. We've got a bunch of smart kids. I, I'd like to see the National Honor Society promoted a little more than our school, a little more recognition. Those kids uh, really work hard, and I think the other kids need to see where they would, where they could end up with hard work. So, uh, thank you for inviting me. Oh, really? Josh and Stan and I attended a, uh, a meeting with uh, the Rec Commission, Nick and uh, Ryan Witt and uh, Jerry Bruton. And uh, they talked about uh, their, they want to put up a building, their facility needs. Uh, I, I think they've got a lot of ways to go before they come and talk to us about it. And Josh might have some more information. And I'm going to leave it at that because I don't want to confuse anyone. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what else was said? <laughs> I think really, I won't, I won't add really much to it except that we just need more specifics on what's, what's needed. We've got kind of a loose idea of what they want, but hard numbers. And, we're a ways away from that, so we need more specifics. Barb? Seems like there was something I was going to report on that I forgot, so sign of old age. I'm just going to go on. All right, Tim, so you let us know. Carol? It's a PDC meeting, but nothing out of the ordinary to report. Like, oh, you guys have just had a dull life. <laughs> I've attended uh, a special ed board meeting, and it was very enlightening. It lasted as long as it 
three meetings put together the last one. Uh, had some decisions to make. Budget crunches hit the special ed for a while. Um, because we've lowered the uh, cash reserves, is that what it's called cash reserves? Yeah. From originally $5 million when I was started, and we're in the year is projected to be about two point. Six million. So we're. A lot of people think we're losing money. We're not losing money. It's that we're spending money. Okay. It's how you, in other words, we've approved spending, and it, a lot of it's had to do with needs. We've had more people us, that have had needs, and we've had to hire more pairs. And, and we have 15 districts, and they've had to hire more people, and they've had to do some things, and, and part of it, we knew that we needed to spend down the cash reserves. That was just one of the things that we were doing. Well, there's a point you have to stop. And so, in doing so, some people, um, uh, we, we just had to cut some staff. Just put it short. And it was hard, some very tough decisions, recommendations were made, and, and uh, so, the other thing that we spent some time talking about was um, the sale of the office building down there and move everything into Haskins. Um, at this time, that won't happen. It's just not a good time to do it. it, it in the long term, it probably be a good thing and to have things more central located, consolidate some staff there. And, Duplication, just like kind of what we've done, some duplication. Have some staff, you know, secretarial staff carry over and do some clerical stuff. Uh, so, I think in long term that you may see that sell that building, and, and that would help maybe eat some cash things. But right now, I just don't see it happening. I don't recommend it. I, I think I don't think it'd look good to sell that, just for the sake of trying to raise money. And then I've been uh, your friendly negotiator with the negotiating team every Wednesday night. It's rained every single time for five weeks straight, so I've been able to attend those. And they're going very smoothly, to say the least. Um, I'm hoping that we wrap up this Wednesday. Um, be the first. It's different negotiating process than I'm kind of used to fact that they only want to do one or two things. I like to put everything on the table and take care of them. I'm one of those, if we can get it done tonight, let's get it. But I've been patient. Talk has been really productive across the table. and uh, it's, That's tough because there is no money. We've, we're, we're having to cut $750,000 out of the budget. Fewer staff people. So it's, it's really tough. And the biggest thing is, is the addition of people to the health care plan, I talked to you about that last time, to the tune of almost a million dollars. Hmm. So, it's been real interesting with the special ed co-op. Uh, to get things back in line so that we can uh, operate. So The teachers have, I just, um, have been very cooperative through the negotiation process. We've, we've tweaked some things and so, Hopefully we can wrap it up. Was that your recruiting speech for who wants to do this next year? <laughs> It'll be done. The negotiation will be over. With. <laughs> they're they're aiming to have it over with. So you whoever takes my place will. It you know it's most of the meetings are are they've been well run. Uh, I do know there'll be some changes. There'll be different leadership from the board's perspective because Kent is didn't. Uh, get reelected, and so there'll be a different chairperson altogether and vice chairman, uh, which will be kind of interesting. Where they recruit and do that, and then we had somebody resign last off the board last time because they took a different job. So the makeup changes quite a bit down there. But it's not <coughs> not too bad. Yeah, I lost my air. Now it's time for... <coughs> okay. Uh,
elementary board reports on page 66 of your documents. Um, third and fourth grade both piloted some of the Smarter Balance testing in early April. We learned a lot um, from watching the kids do that testing, both about um, the interface, um, areas our kids might need to improve when we're looking at Common Core standards and Smarter Balance testing is based on those. So, um, again, I think we got a lot of good information from that experience. Um, Mr. Cooper's class performed a play three times the week of April 22nd, um, his MTSS group. So it was first and second graders. And it was fairly well attended. It was a lot of fun. Great play. Um, we've had the traveling chunk here from um, Fort Larned. Our after-school program, um, we are actually up to 48 students enrolled now. Um, the grant goal was to have 50 enrolled, um, so we're just about there. I don't think we expected to be this close to our goal this quickly. Um, so there's a pretty, it's a big program to be running. Um, the folks we have working in our after-school program are doing a great job. But they're having to make um, adjustments really quickly to serve that many kids at, at that you know big of an age spread. So I'm really pleased with the program. And again, the people we have working are doing a great job. Um, Mobile Dairy Classroom will be here May 17th. That is a reschedule. They were supposed to be here on one of our snowy days in April. Um, and of course, elementary track meet is Friday. So if you're not already volunteering, please come out in the afternoon and watch our kids. Um, see the parents out there volunteering. It's just a neat event for our school, as you all know. Um, on the after school program, I believe Mrs. Davis will be speaking to the board in June. So she'll be coming to talk. We are having a summer session with the after school. Administrative, our enrollment held study this month. Um, Pre-K enrollment held study. Site council meeting, PTO, was this evening at 6. Um, I'm really happy with that group. Um, they're working really hard. Um, we're working on getting um, information about getting some grass into the playground. Um, so we're gathering information at this point um, and brainstorming ways to get our community involved, volunteers involved, um, doing a fundraiser possibly at the Jubilee. Um, so again, we're gathering information and making plans there. Um, PTO also helped um, this week. I also have in here as Teacher Appreciation Week, and PTO has worked to provide some muffins and some cards and some things for our teachers tomorrow um, and I'm very appreciative of help there. Kindergarten Roundup was April 19th. 24 went through, two were ill, so we have 26 firm on our list. And as you know, that number goes up and down, but right now we have 26 firm on the list. Um, our next pre-K Screening is July 25th. We still have several on the list that want to come to preschool that need to be screened. Um, right now, my firm preschool list is 41. That's my firm. So, and again, I know there's more out there. Um, this week is Teacher Appreciation Week. Um, and please take a minute to send your favorite teacher an email and express your appreciation. They work really hard. Um, I know a lot of jobs are thankless jobs. It's kind of a thankless job. So, um, really, or take a walk through the building, come in anytime, grab a visitor's pass and walk through, and I think that they would feel really good if you showed up in their classroom and just said thank you. So, take a couple minutes and do that this week if you can find the time. I know you guys work hard too. Um, South Central Kansas Special Ed Cooperative extended a contract to TC Axman for the halftime pre-K position, so we're very excited about that and adding that halftime position. Um, the pre-K classroom will be housed in the early ed building 
in the room right across the hall from Cindy Allen. Teresa Miller and elementary special ed will be moving to well, what we've called the elementary science room right there by the office. Um, so we'll be doing a little moving, reconfiguring this summer. Um, we've got various classes taking field trips. Kindergarten was all on a field trip today. And um, got a lot of people going places here this May. I think that's all I've got. Questions for me? Awesome. was last Tuesday evening uh, at the state's music um, solos. This was at the end of April, actually. Uh, Kendra Hacker received a one rating. Uh, the honors luncheon, which uh, Chad mentioned earlier, we had to go to the old gym because of the rain. So. Um, earlier in April, we went to the uh, CPL art contest, and I put up the names of the uh, students and who placed those different categories. Yeah, Bo Weber, he, Bo goes to Stafford, but they don't have art, so we should, they, uh, he comes over here to, to be in art class. So that's why Bo's up there. He's uh, good at stuff in art. Um, activity banquet was held on the 18th for junior high students to be recognized. Had a good turnout. Um, we've done some pre-enrollment, still working on that, getting that information collected. Uh, for enrollment for next year. The high school activities banquet is next Tuesday the 14th in the big gym at 6.30. Um, we recognize all the students in high school for all the sports. Um, class night is Thursday the 16th. If you're, all aware, you're all welcome to come to that at 7 o'clock. Um, I didn't have this on there. But the last couple Sundays in the Hutch paper, they had it was actually kind of in the back. They had the uh, Hutch News honor teams, and you could have uh, students could be put in there for leadership, community service, uh, fine performing arts. Uh, we had um, Ryan Collins was selected for leadership, community service, Jamie Waters for the same thing, and Kendra Hacker for fine performing arts. So just want to make note of that for those three. Um, we are, let's see. We mentioned uh, high school, the junior high CPL track is tomorrow at lacrosse. Um, the high school CPL track is Thursday here, hosted by Maxville. Um, let's see, um, we've had, uh, let's uh, they talked to the coaches, we put together some inform our, um, schedule for this summer when we have camps. Um, you remember we used to have, back three or four years ago before they changed the rule, you. You know, coaches could work with their players, your, your sport, for one week during a certain time. Well, three or four years ago, we changed the rule. You can now work with your kids from the Saturday preceding Memorial Day until the third week, or third weekend, it kind of varies, Saturday in July. So now, it, we don't really have to call them camps. There is no limit. They could have practice every day if they wanted to. From that Saturday preceding Memorial Day until July 20th this year, they can do what they want to with their kids. You can have as many kids from the same school, team, whatever, and work. Once July 20th comes, then you can't any longer. So we have camps set up that you know, and they can work with them. And they obviously won't be practicing every day. But I just use that as an example they could. So they'll have camps, and we have that schedule set up where they can do that. Um, in a few years ago, you remember that 1A was all one division. And but in 2009, I believe 1A split into two divisions. And so we have a 1A Division 1 and a 1A Division 2. And since we've been going to 1A, we're Division 1. So over the last uh, two, three years, four years, they've been talking about the private public and the issue of, and 4A has brought up the idea that they have, there's so much disparity between the biggest 4A school and the smallest 4A school that they should split up um, their, their class. Um, so that's been going on for a couple of years. Uh, not because of the same reason 1A did it. 1A did it because of the number of schools. 
They're talking about it because of the number of students. So at the end of April, we had the last board of directors meeting. That was that was brought up, and uh, the vote was taken at the board of directors, which has 76 members. And a majority vote, if that passed, then it would go to the 4A schools to vote to see if they would split 32 biggest and 32 smallest in 4A. So the vote, uh, it needed a majority, and it got the majority by, I don't know, four or five votes and the board of directors. So here in the next couple of weeks, we'll find out when 4A votes, if they, you know, based on the 4A school, there's 64 of them, so you can do the math on how many it takes majority. If uh, 33 of them vote, then there'll be two classes of 4A, and we'll have eight classes instead of seven that we do now. But would that affect anything that our school does? Not really. No. No. And so, it, and that's why they, they just, the, there was a lot of arguments, as you can imagine, both ways, and people talking. Last, last Friday evening, uh, the, the 26th, when we went there, there was a lot of discussion. The meeting took quite a while just on that topic, as you can imagine. Um, and so the vote was, it was close just to get out of it from the board of directors, but <coughs> it did pass. One thing that could affect us is the officials. Yeah, the that, number of officials available when you add one more class yeah, on uh, that might, right. on substate. Is that for all activities or just? Hey, oh, yeah, that's a good question. It, what they did was they uh, <laughs> that was another point of discussion, but it it uh, only applies to football, basketball, volleyball, baseball, and softball. It applies to those five activities. Now, one A when we did one A. I'm sure you have got this memorized. It only applies to football, or excuse me, basketball, volleyball, and scholars ball in one eight. That's what it knows of the five activities it applies to in you know, four eight. So, just thought I'd throw that out just so you're aware of it. And uh, it doesn't have a, like I say, it doesn't have a large impact on us. But um, there are people that would like us to go back to one division of one A instead of splitting like we did. So, anyway, that's where we're at with that. So. I'd throw that out. Um, we've had some interest um, in um, uh, person has to expressed interest in wrestling. Um, yeah. On on that topic, yeah. if uh, I'm not asking anything today, was, uh, but if there would be any interest in a cooperative agreement with an area school mm -hmm. for wrestling, so think on that. And we'll bring it up next meeting. Feel free to send me your thoughts or with me about it. Cooperating. Yeah, baccalaureate. Yeah, baccalaureate is uh, Wednesday night. Uh, baccalaureate is Wednesday night at seven o'clock. Um, is baccalaureate in the auditorium? Um, graduation will be on the eighteenth, um, which would be a week from this Saturday. It'd be at four o'clock. Uh, you remember last year we changed uh, the setup about how we did the graduation. We put the stage at the clear at the east end and board members, um, administration, and then board sat along the, on the stage. We had the podium and then the board members could just stand up and pass those out. The, the diplomas as the kids walked, they just all came through the same way. So we'll follow the same format. Um, it starts at 4, so if you would be in the, um, just come to the teacher's lounge roughly 3.30. 335 be there and then I'll go over some last minute things or anything we need to talk about. I don't believe we have anybody this year that has any a son or daughter that's going to walk across so um, as far as presenting so it, it, Merlin and Stan would present unless they're and, and that could it doesn't matter we can work things out where other people can present to the diploma that the students walk through but that's the way we do it unless there was a it's just yes a certain person you wanted to hand that to relative, or it doesn't have to be a son or daughter, but if there's a relative or something like that, that could be worked out amongst yourselves. Can you but, put on yeah. thoughts on that? Yeah, if anybody, anybody has any uh, that they'd like particular to. interest. Yeah. Right, particular interest in just handing them out. Professional development, uh, recently, April 19th, we finally did get our uh, teacher visits done. We had uh, some folks go to Bentley, uh, some folks go to Otis Bison.
Smoky Valley learning. Uh, facts teacher went to Burton. Somebody go to Pratt. Uh, came back. Mo most of us got back and were able to visit about and share out uh, some things. Uh, I, th I thought the day was very productive. And, uh, folks got a lot of good good out of that. Um, next year we're putting out a staff survey about what uh, uh, the interests are for professional development. What might some of their individual needs or uh, maybe needs as a building or district that we ought to address. Uh, our teacher evaluation tool will be a big part of our professional development next year and uh, not just learning about the tool but the content and what we really think uh, good teaching is. Uh, we'll continue with the iPads and technology and those things. Um, emergency safety interventions uh, we will have policy coming up. Uh, the State Board of Education passed new regulations that actually went into effect uh, April 19th. So we've informed staff about those. What we're talking about here is seclusion and restraint. A lot of times this is just for special ed students. If there's somebody, a student we have to restrain or we have to put in a room because they're a danger to uh, himself or herself or others. Uh, so a lot of times we don't run into those issues, but we still need to be aware of them. Uh, KSB will be sending us uh, the policies, but as an example, uh, we can't use restraint that uh, is a, a certain uh, a prone or supine physical restraint. I don't even know what that is. I don't have experience with it. Uh, it's restraint that blocks the student's airway, uh, we need to communicate with parents whenever there is something like that. So uh, you'll be seeing policy uh, come through about that. Our preschool update, uh, Andrea mentioned uh, all of those things. Uh, it seems like common sense that why would, would, wouldn't we just put the uh, second preschool room in the room that was designed to be a preschool? Well, the issue we've had is uh, handicapped access with our special education uh, students and that we kind of thought was a deal breaker on moving that student over to the main building uh, with access issues with restrooms and some of those things but we were able to talk through those things and work them out so in the end it's going to be I think the best situation with the preschool classrooms right there together uh, in the space that was actually designed to be there so uh, our after school program, like Andrea said, is going to be going through the summer. We're also going to be doing the summer lunch program again. Uh, that's funded by the state. That doesn't uh, cost us anything. Uh, that gives our folks opportunity to, uh, to work a few more hours that they normally may not get. Uh, it'll kind of work in conjunction with our after school <coughs> program. When they're done there, they can go over and have lunch. So why are you going to afford it? Go ahead. I was just wondering if you went to that four day a week, what are you going to do on Friday? Our lunch will be four days. We won't do lunch on Friday. The after school program will still run five days. It's over here. So the, the library will be open uh, as normal. Uh, some administrative things. A uh, quick budget update here. Uh, the budget's been agreed upon by both chambers in the State House. Uh, funding will be flat. What does that mean? Consider special education. The dollars are going to be the same. Well, there will be higher enrollment, we'll have more special education, special education teachers. So that means the funding per teacher will go down. If you're growing and you're hiring more special education teachers, you probably don't see a big difference. But in our area, we're actually reducing the number of, of special, educa special education teachers. We will see our funding go down uh, within the co-op uh, related to that. Uh, also, local option budget and bond aid. We don't get any of that aid, but for those districts, they'll see their percentage go down because that's not funded at full levels. Those dollars are going to be the same. So whenever we talk about funding being flat, costs increase. And if the dollars are the same in a perfect world, we just continue to move on with life and government spending doesn't go up. 
uh, but things cost more year after year. They do in your home budget, they do for us here at school, they do in our co-op. So that's what we're going to be seeing. The tax plan uh, has not been figured out. Um, at some point, uh, I, I want to ask them, uh, what did you think was going to happen? With no taxes, there's no revenue, and how are we going to pay for what we want? So that's all the editorializing I'll do. Uh, but that's the boat we're in. Locally, uh, you have a document here on your, uh, on your page. It's not uh, professionally put together, but I did want to get it in writing to you with some uh, updates, some things that I look at that may help you understand. My spreadsheet has a lot more numbers on it than this, uh, but I wanted to share this with you. What I, what I look at is, and it's helpful for me without running the budget uh, in previous years, I can kind of look at how did we spend money last year compared to how we're spending it now. So if we look at overall expenses, I'm not including capital outlay, special education, which is budgeted, we need to spend that much. Uh, this would be kind of uh, discretionary spending, teacher salaries, some of those things. Uh, so those two numbers were about 85000 more than last year at this point. So figuring out to the end of the year, it will be on track to spend roughly 100000 more. We're looking at about 3% higher. Uh, our anticipated revenue is about 123,000 higher than last year, uh, mainly due to the enrollment increase. So what does all that mean? All the contingency fund uh, uh, expenditures that we had planned, we likely will not need to use those. Um, so looking at next year, what are some of the things we have coming up? Well, we know there's going to be some increases. Our special ed assessment, part of that, making up that $750,000 uh, budget shortfall at the special ed co-op, is assessing a higher fee to local districts. They've requested uh, an increase on our part, our share of that would be $19,000. i have asked them to cut that in half. Let's make up half this year and maybe half next year. Uh, if we can afford to do that. So I should find out next week uh, where we are on that, if, if that's possible. For now, I'm planning on the 19000 Our health insurance, the premiums are going up 14% uh, roughly. A th about a third of that increase is due to the Affordable Care Act. So it's not all related to that, but a third of that 14 to 16 percent increase is due to the taxes and fees associated with uh, with that uh, Affordable Care Act. Is that Obamacare? Yes. Yes. Uh, so if the board has the board has traditionally paid uh, for a full single premium and it's identified in the negotiated agreement as a set dollar amount. Uh, but we also need to keep up with, uh, with at least 95% of that in order to maintain our status within the, uh, uh, our health care plan with ESDAC. So planning on maintaining that same level of funding, providing that benefit for our employees, that means about $29,000 increase for us. Uh, for our district. Negotiations, as a, as a starting point, uh, steps and columns will cost us about $8,000. So any change in base uh, would affect that from there. Uh, our workman's comp and our property insurance, estimating that to be about $8,000 higher next year. Uh, without the additional revenue from the library and our local option budget, uh, we'd be uh, we'd be looking at some more some more cuts. How do we make those things up? The local option budget that that would be higher because uh, it could have been that much higher this year, but we didn't cushion the budget enough. So. If you remember at the beginning of the year when we cushioned the budget, 
uh, our, the budget we actually published was planning for a higher enrollment than we actually anticipated because we republished the general fund but if our local option budget is higher because of enrollment we can't change it because we collect local taxes we can't republish that so uh, next year all things being fairly equal we'll be able to make that up and collect that that revenue from our local option budget so that's all potential so that's kind of a picture of of where we're headed this isn't uh, this this is very manageable uh, especially if we end up in a good situation finishing out the year uh, any questions on that information Our recreation building, I didn't really have anything to add uh, on that. Quickly here, I'll show you this. Uh, I will send this to you in an email also, but uh, one thing Julianne and I have been working on is this Board of Education business calendar. Just outlines what we need to do each month, some of the deadlines that come through, uh, what would be typical for business. July is huge because we have all those appointments and, and a lot of those things that uh, that's a matter of a, a few motions but I wanted to make sure all that was in there and then you know, for example here's August some of the things we have to do and and the other months so this is kind of a working document just to keep us all on the same page looking ahead and, and it's as much for me as it is you all just to make sure we're getting things on the agenda that need to be. A few other things that uh, Julianne's been hard at work on, we've been hard at work on in the office is uh, is our policies and procedures. We don't have a lot of documents that guide us on our personnel policies and how much do we pay for classified insurance and how many hours do they have to work and uh, um, vacation days, a lot of that hasn't been in writing. Um, credit card guidelines, policy, activity fund guidelines. So those are examples of three things we, we've put together uh, to help us. I guess I kind of approach a lot of these things as, uh, as I'm not going to be here and Julianne's not going to be here. Somebody's going to have to come in and take this on. How are they going to know what to do? So. We've done a lot of work to put some of those together. So those will be in our um, policy manual. So that's all I have for my report. I just want to commend the, all of the administrators for the reports. I think they're well put together and easy to follow and give us valuable information. Do you have a question? There was one on uh, Mr. Bergen's report, High School Football Camp Elmas. Did you go over that and I missed it? What does that mean? Oh, oh yeah, help. Yeah, that was, um, I think Keisha, um, they used to have, when they do, when they do football camps, they changed the rule that during football camp they would allow, they allow um, students in schools now to wear helmets. And so the board, I want to make sure the board um, is aware, you know, if there's any um, issues or have any questions about that, or uh, during that, during that week when they have camp, so, you know, they, that's been talked about for a number of years to try to let them to get them to be able to wear helmets. So whether, you know, you can teach safety techniques or, or for another other reason, just to get used to wearing a helmet. And so... It know. used to be when yeah. the coach would have a camp. Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, Coach Kinneman's camp. And he collects the money for it and gets his own insurance. And that's kind of how it used to work. Mm -hmm. uh, they could still do that. Um, and if, if it would be Coach Garcia's football camp and he's running it, making the money for it, uh, it's on him. And we would need to approve right. leasing the helmets or allowing him to use the helmets. Uh, but if, we're, if it's just St. John High School football practice, week-long practice slash camp, uh, it's part of just like it would be for practice. So it used to be a bigger deal than it is. Yeah, uh, it's a little different for it's discussion. A rule is different now. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, sorry about that, Tom. I, I forgot about okay. that. Yeah, yeah. I did have a question. This reverts back to the uh, survey. And the one thing that bothered me was about the staff that thought drug and alcohol was a problem mm -hmm. in our school. <clears throat> Is this something that, I mean, was it furthered? What be further explained in in your book um, as to what they're talking about? Or there would be specific uh, numbers, and we can see the actual questions that were asked, and it may be that that simple. But I don't think it will elaborate a lot on what all that means. But yeah, it is a concern. Yeah, I just think that we need to start addressing something or. Apparently, Dare is not doing a, you know, a complete job, or and I realize it's been around for a long time. There, if the staff is pretty worried about it, I think we need to be worried about it too. So, yeah, I don't know if we can understand more fully what is it prescription drugs, is it more alcohol drugs, is it, yeah. Oh, yeah, is it alcohol? But anyway. Yeah, and I don't know what those specifics are, how they ask them. Okay, if there's nothing further, we'll move on to the next item, which is executive session items. Personnel negotiations. How much time would you like? Uh, 15 minutes. And to include? Uh, uh, Andrea. Do we have anything? I didn't, I didn't think so. I don't yeah. think so. Mrs. No. Sailor Steve Keys? I don't think so. Okay. 15 minutes with Amy Brewfestival. Amy Brewfestival. Is it Carl Steve? Yes. And, and uh, the, the board would be okay with Mr. Barrett staying too. I have a problem. I would recommend that. I will make that motion for 15 minutes with Mrs. Stiffy's superintendent, Carl, and Mrs. Second. 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 Uh, on favor, right hand. Both same sign. So no. Uh, Tammy Roush, uh, I have a letter here from her resigning from her teaching position. Uh, I want to thank you for allowing me to be a part of St. John Hudson School District. It's been a great place to live and raise our children. We'll take with me many happy memories. Um, I can get a motion to approve that resignation. President, I move we accept the nomination. I mean, the uh, resignation. Close. <laughs> From Tammy Rausch. Second. Moving second to accept the resignation of Tammy Rausch's teacher. Is there any discussion? All in favor, right hand. Those same sign, 7 0. Also, a letter of resignation from Lindsay Lutman uh, for an instructional aid position. I need a motion to accept that resignation as well. Mr. President, I move that we looking at the wrong person. We accept uh, the resignation of Lindsay Lutman as instructional aide. Second. We move and second to approve the resignation of Lindsay Lutman as instructional aide. All in favor, right hand. Those same signs, seven out. I have a recommendation for hiring for uh, the position vacated by Tandy Rouse for next year. Uh, I recommend hiring Alyssa Maherter uh, for the 5th and 6th grade teaching position for next year. Mr. President, I move that we um, offer a contract to Alyssa Maherter for um, ELA 6th ELA grade teacher, 5th and 6th grade teacher for 13-14 school year. Second. Been moved and second to offer a contract to Alyssa and her for teaching position next year. All in favor, right hand. Go to the same sign. 7 0.
Any other items? That's all I have. Future items? Um, uh, we'll have to get our negotiations all okay. wrapped up. Uh, and then graduation time coming in for that, 3.30 on Saturday, the 18th. There's nothing else, I'll entertain a motion for adjourn. The president, I'll move to adjourn. Second. Been moved and seconded to adjourn. All in favor, right hand.